Hi, John Reed, uh, Aerodinosaur. This is a simple video summary featuring my full audio footage of the last airworthy short Sunderland four-engine piston seaplane in operation during 1993. It plied the maritime skies worldwide during World War II and Korea as an armed anti-submarine patrol aircraft. In addition to being flown by Great Britain, it was also flown by Australia, New Zealand, Norway, Canada, and South Africa, and I think a couple others. A few also flew in the post-war era as a 36-passenger airliner conversion called the Sandringham, which was how our subject aircraft was configured. However, today I'll refer to this plane only as the Sunderland, as that was the core variant, and otherwise that's easier to pronounce. The Sunderland flew in the maritime military role until 1960, and the last Sandringham did not leave airline service until 1974. I won't go into extreme detail on the history of the Sunderland or this specific aircraft, as plenty is available on YouTube and other online sources, which we'll discuss in a minute. The low-pass footage you're about to see sort of fills in the blanks of existing coverage of this plane. I captured it in July 1993 at the annual Oshkosh Air Venture event in Wisconsin. The plane had been purchased in the UK earlier that month by the well-known aviation preservationist Kermit Weeks. He had just flown a direct transatlantic crossing for what I think was a surprise arrival at Oshkosh, and my multiple low-pass airshow footage represents Weeks' first public Sunderland performances upon arriving in the US. I published some of this footage later in 1993 as part of my Heavy Piston Dinosaur video series. Hint, hint, that was back when you could actually make good money doing that. I've since not seen any other recordings of this event, but I'm sure it would have to exist somewhere, given that it seemed that there were thousands of video cameras on site at the time. Weeks kept the Sunderland flying until sometime in 1996, and during this period he even carried the Olympic torch in the plane in a highly publicized event, the fire of which was safely contained inside sealed canisters. The plane now resides in a static display at his extensive Fantasy of Flight Museum in Florida and would require comprehensive and expensive rework to get it back into the air again. I don't personally know Mr. Weeks, and he certainly doesn't know me, but you can find his excellent first-hand and very detailed two-part walkthrough video series on his now static Sunderland display on his YouTube channel. For your convenience, I've included those two videos on this Aerodinosaur channel's playlist and highly recommend you view them both for a well-rounded perspective. You'll notice Weeks' presentation style is pleasantly casual and off the cuff. On several occasions, you'll see he guesses that he, he first flew the Sunderland to the U.S. and Oshkosh in 1994. Since I'm guilty of getting dates and times mixed up all the time, I checked my published clips of this event and found they were clearly documented, copyrighted, and released in 1993, and I cross-checked this with the dates of my first video orders and with other sources, just to be sure. If you've visited this Aerodinosaur channel before, you may know that I don't include any discussion of any featured vintage aircraft without briefly talking about the engines that powered it, and this is no exception. Our featured Sunderland was powered by four air-cooled Pratt & Whitney R1830 14-cylinder double-row radial engines of 1,200 horsepower takeoff power each, which was later developed into 1,350 horsepower variants. The 1830 also powered such notable wartime and post-war aircraft, such as the Douglas DC-3 C-47, the PBY Catalina, and the B-24 Liberator, which looks like my radio-controlled replica seen here, along with quite a few others. 
The engine was generally used in multi-engine rather than fighter applications. Okay, here's my footage. Time to watch a bunch of historic low passes. The opportunity to film this plane during its U.S. debut was a total surprise to me and many others at Oshkosh that year.